Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on BeamNG Drive for a fan favourite event, if you will, and one we haven't done for a long time. We still regularly get requests for more relay races. Yes, that is what we are going to be attempting here. Uh, it's pretty simple. There are two people on a team. I am teamed up with Joe. Amy is teamed up with Ollie, and we are going to race up this Wibbly Mountain path. Uh, you get to the top, and as you go past the vehicles up there, there, they will set off, and then they race back down to the bottom. The first one back to the bottom will be the victor. But of course, we're on beam. Lots of things can go wrong. If you crash, if you put a wheel on the dirt, you hit a rock, your car's going to be in a lot of trouble and you're going to have to limp your way up to the very top. It's quite a long road, so you really don't want to have to reset back to the start. Um, the rules for the vehicles were pretty simple. Uh, there has to be two-wheel drive and power to ratio 0 0.2 and all on sport tyres. So there's hopefully some kind of parity between them. Uh, I am up against uh, Amy with the new minivan. I really don't want to go in that ditch. That ditch concerns me uh, on the outside. It can snap wheels off the vehicles. Uh, so I've got to be a little bit careful. And, I mean, I'm just shy of 1,600 kilos. The minivan is even heavier. That's quite a lot of weight getting up here, up this route, so to speak. And there is also another lovely, I say lovely, little kerbal coming up further on. We've got a nice lead at the moment, which is what we want. Um, the winner from this heat, if you will, will go into the next one. Uh, losers go into a spanner final, so there's a chance for them to progress. Uh, now, this section here is quite narrow. And my car is not great. My car's just so understeering through here. Oh, there's a rock. Don't want to hit that. Uh, oy. hell. I think Amy's being a little bit braver. I am a little concerned. So I have massive carbon ceramic brakes on this that are very easy to lock up. Now, I did have ABS on, however, ABS just meant the car didn't break at all, so I've got rid of it and just have to deal with the lockups. Now, this section coming up here is where things get really sketchy, because there is ice to contend with, and, well, yes, ice is actually legit very slippery in this game, and we're in two-wheel drive cars on tyres not specifically designed for ice, and I have, oh, I have a lot of oversteer. Wee! By the looks of it, Amy has a lot of understeer. Uh, it's so difficult to judge. It's actually been quite close up this climb. I have been a little bit, oh god, careful with the car. Because the last thing you want to do is that. Amy has overcooked it somewhere. And that is a big spin around for the minivan. There is so little grip up here. I, I, <laughs> like we're at 24 miles an hour and the vehicle is just understeering. Go, Joe. We can leave that car. It doesn't matter where our car goes. Or oh, uh, Joe almost uh, got in trouble through there. I think I hit a fence. Now, Joe is driving the Mr. Turbo Covert mid-engine rear-wheel drive Covert that's twitchy as anything through there. Uh, there is Ollie with, what is Ollie driving? The Lagrada State Car. It's very pink as we round the next corner. So we've handed over with a good bit of a lead for Orange Team. Joe is going very sideways and very close to the barrier. Bloody hell. You're going to give me a heart attack. This is the downside of relay races. You've got to rely on others. <laughs> I say that. I nearly binned it a couple of times going up the course. We are getting out of the ice and the snow section. That's good news for the COVID. It will get easier to drive. Uh, Ollie is possibly going to have to start really going for it. Although big understeer there is a real problem for that Legron. Because you don't want to... Last, the last thing you want to do in the lead of the race is push too hard, make a silly error and have a huge accident because this course is very, very, I say difficult, is very technically demanding. The speeds aren't all that great. They will be greater going downhill. I think Ollie may have clipped the concrete. Oh, I think Joe may have clipped the Armco at that point. We've got a few more corners to go. The Legrand is being chucked in with some speed. Uh, but it's still that little bit too far back at the moment. We can see the finish line up ahead. Joe has just got to not make a big mistake around this next corner, which they do not. There's a little rub on the wall. You can see the Coverts lost a bumper at some point, and it is around the final corner and joe is across the line our team is through to the next round the legron oh the legron has taken a hit <laughs> ollie tried i mean we did see amy had a big 
uh, bump on the wall. Uh, it went for a big spin, essentially, uh, which helped extend the lead. Yeah, we played it a little bit cautious ourselves on the way up there. However, it was good enough. We are through to the next round. The pink cars are into a spanner final. Now, because of the slightly uneven number of teams that we have in this, we've got three cars for this, or three teams, if you will, for this second heat. The winner will automatically go through to the uh, semi-finals. The two losers will go into the Spanner final. Uh, we have Brazen and Gliska, Blazer and Speed Beast, Shadow and Impega on this one. And We've got quite a different uh, philosophy from the first round in that this this round there's lots of cars missing bits of bodywork. In fact, Brazen's missing a seat as we get off and underway. Oh, there's already been a kerfuffle. Shadow and Blazer have got stuck together a little bit. They have untangled and they are off and underway here. Uh, so to get cars to the power to weight ratio, some have gone extreme weight shedding essentially and uh, Shadow's got a sensible looking car Blazer has barely got a Wendover left it does look a little bit dicey in the Wendover now Brazen has a decent sized lead but of course let's not forget this is far from over they have an ice section to deal with and they've got the car going downhill one big crash on this course can end your run now people are allowed to reset if they totally wreck out but you've got to reset back at the start line which is going to be a long way away. You do not want to total your car because, yeah, that will be, that will be game over completely. Blazer sent it through the containers there, trying to carry as much speed as possible. I think Shadow has got maybe the slightly faster car. Oops, can't go through there with the free camera. I, uh, uh, possibly Shadow might have a slightly faster car, although it looks like they may have made a mistake. Typically, as I said that, I think they've made a mistake. I think Shadow might have broken it. That seems to be now really struggling. Uh, Brazen is onto the ice, onto the snow. It's so slippery out here. We saw, we saw Amy have a big spin on this section. It's really easy to do uh, through here. Although, Brazen has done a very good job. The front wheel drive may be slightly easier in the ice. Shadow is going to bump the wall. No, not quite. Uh, Brazen will be through and is going to hand over. This is where things get a little dicey, of course, because Brazen's got quite a big lead. He's going to hand over to Gliska, who will set off. However, they have got to uh, head towards cars, and there's no one's got any grip. Uh, that's not a sight you want to see on it. <laughs> It was always, it was too wide heading towards them. Shadow's been stolen. Uh, Speed Beast is going to set off. Uh, now, oh, Shadow is just about going to make it. So the real question is, uh, Shadow's, it's close enough. We'll give that one. The real question is how badly broken is Gliska's car? How much damage did that take? It looks like it might be... It looks like a little bit buckled. Will Speed Beast be able to catch up here? Uh, it's looking like possibly on this. But then you've got to find a way past. And that's so much easier said than done. Is to find a way past on this route. Impega, I think, has just pinged it off an Armco barrier. That's fine. Uh, Speed Beast is going for it. Uh, down there has... Oh, I think Gliska might be in trouble through all of this. Uh, oh, they've both clonked a wall. I think Gliska's got heavily damaged steering at this point. Oh, dear. And, well, now they've both... Uh, Impega might be... Oh. <laughs> I just look back, and Impega's gone straight and got into a wall. And Gliska's struggling to get going with, I think, buckled steering at this point. I think Gliska's car might be immobilised. Um... Yeah, I, I think I actually might have had a, a, a sneaker. To be fair, it's, uh, yeah, the lot of the damage there, not exactly their fault on that one. It's just, it was so unlucky to find Car. Impega smacked it in a wall, and Impega is also very heavily broken. Yeah. <laughs> Where has Speed Beast gone? As long as Speed Beast doesn't wreck it, which doesn't look like it is going to happen on the run down here um it is going to be a speed beast that is going to take a victory and progress it was unlucky for blue team it was it was very unlucky that uh, they just happened to have cars going side by side at the worst possible juncture they're not out of it though they are not out of it there is still a chance speed beast 
might have, might have bumped something with that. It doesn't quite look right by the end of it. I wonder if it found a ditch. But Speed Beast will make it. The Charrier is hanging on, and I'm sure about to get punted. Because uh, <laughs> I would have done the same if I'd seen that. Uh, Speed Beast is through. There was a bump and a shunt, and unfortunately for Gliska, an unlucky turn of events put the Blue Machine uh, in trouble. Shadow didn't have a great run, and Impega had just so much work to do that they went too quick and broke it. However, there is a chance for these vehicles in the Spanner Final. We head into the Spanner Final next. Now, the top two teams from this will go through. It's just the way we're having to work this so that all the tournament will, will work out. Um, so, only, we only actually technically really eliminate one team. But, uh, yeah, top two go through. So, there's lots of chances here for these teams uh, that didn't necessarily have the best of luck. I mean, Impega and Brazen had quite a lot of bad luck. In the first round against Pink Team, it was a mostly fair race. Um, although there was a little crash uh, from the minivan. A couple of swapped running orders. Um, Brazen is still going uphill with Glitter going downhill. The others have changed. Oh, he's got... It's a bit dicey setting off 3-1. Like, you can do it, but it is a bit sketchy. I think Brazen has got away with this one and will be to the inside. Uh, although he runs wide on the exit. Pega is leading the way uh, through all of this. Uh, which has got a, got, a nice, let's say, got a nice little gap back. Brazen's Pazima is certainly not slow. Despite the fact that Pega's looks like a properly, you know, tuner modified race car. And Brazen's looks like something found in a barn. Uh, Brazen's has actually got some serious pace up here as we climb the next hill. Uh, will Brazen be able to find a way past? We're heading through the container. The thing is, though, you've got to be careful. Don't get too carried away in your own fight and end up having an accident, breaking your car, and allowing the pink team back into this because the pink car is a little bit further back. The Pazimas are all close together. They are side by side. Brazen's just going to have to tuck back into line here as we round the next corner. Now, who has got more speed on the ice? This is the big question here. Uh, who is braver as well? The front wheel drives maybe have a little advantage on the ice. Uh, oh, Impega got very close to having trouble there. Dip to wheel. So you cannot afford to put a wheel in the gutters in or over the edge. Just Brazen slightly kisses the armco through there because the last thing you want is a bent steering is a bent bumper brazen is really really looking now for a way cannot quite get close enough and pega lots of understeer oh it's up the wall it's into the fence and it's gonna be brazen that's gonna cross the line first although they're very close brazen is across the line oh almost Blisker almost got taken out uh, in that one they now both set off they see ollie coming they've, they've well organized this one the pink machine is off and underway so it is shadow with the rear wheel drive car versus the front wheel drive gliska shadow looking the long way around is really sideways through there good attempt from the k series it's still having a look it's still slipping and sliding gliska with a lot of understeer and gliska's in the ditch has it bent something on that pazima that is the question Shadow's a bit too sideways. Shadow's going to have to be careful uh, in all of this because that is the way you bend a wheel. And no, oh, <laughs> it's oh, it's nerve wracking. Amy has caught up a bit. Amy has caught up a little bit here. I think let's get maybe. Uh, I think maybe Shadow's car is certainly a little bit better on the ice, and let's get maybe pushed a little bit too hard. Sometimes in this one, ooh, <laughs> oh, God. That the minivan's going into the wall. Oh, yep, yeah, minivan's hit the wall. So this is really the battle for second now. I think Shadow's got this. Uh, Shadow didn't hit the wall and has got the better condition car. Which of these two is in better? They've both taken front end hits. The minivan is all <laughs> over the place. They're both a bit broken. It's bouncing around. I th there's definitely some steering issues in the minivan. <laughs> He's thought about sending it to the inside. Can't do it. Gives a bit of a bump on the way past. I suspect the, the return of serve might happen. Shadow is there. Yeah, there is the return of serve. And the Pazima's up the inside. Although it's on the grass. There is a lot of training of paint going on down here. As the minivan is hopping about all over the place. I mean, Shadow is going to win this. Should probably see what goes on over here. I thought Shadow was a little bit closer to the finish line. I think Gliska's, oh, Gliska's out wide in the armco. Shadow has won. And we'll take victory. 
Jamie is going to cross the line in second. The minivan is through to the next round. It is unlucky for Gliska. I think the damage, I think the damage sustained fighting Shadow uh, is what did the Pazima in, essentially. Uh, it, oh, oh that's a, that, that doesn't really make the corner. <laughs> and then a quick reset to finish. <laughs> oh, man, the minivan is over. <laughs> that falls over really alarmingly easy. But there we go. The, uh... Ah... Uh, Blue team, Gliska and Brazen are out. Amy and Ollie, Shadow and Impega are through to the to the semi-finals. <laughs> it's been a mad round, mad race, mad series so far. So we are on to the semi-finals. There's no second chances now. Uh, we have got my 800 series. We're up against the like a sort of white silver team, uh, Impega and Shadow. Uh, I'm rear-wheel drive. Should be good off the line. Uh, Pega's car probably handles better than mine. I imagine is lighter than mine. It should be an interesting matchup. I am. I'm a little bit concerned. We we should, in theory, get this launch. Uh, if we end up not getting the launch because I wasn't quite in the right gear, we might have a difficult time trying to get past the Pazima. Um, I forgot to hold it on the handbrake and we were starting we were slightly rolling back so we might end up giving Joe a lot of work to do and I think the K-Series is one of the better vehicles here for this uh, so it's going to be a hard work for Joe in this one oh come on understeery barge please just do a little bit of turning for me because uh, I cannot match at the moment I'm struggling to match that Pazima up here uh, that is not where I wanted to put my vehicle. We have run it slightly, although Impega made a little error coming into the container section. Which is... Oh! Impega's made a much bigger error. Impega has made a big accident on the exit there. That could be serious trouble for them. Oh, my, Thankfully, my small error was survivable. I don't know if Impega's is... I think that might be the death of that car. Now, it's front-wheel drive, so the damage at the rear will not have immobilized it necessarily, unless there is more damage, which there could well be more damage. I... I, I am very lucky here. Oh, I say that as we get a lot of understeer. I am very lucky. My very poor start. I might get away with it. Yeah, I just hadn't got the right sequence for the launch. And I have actually bent my steering, Ooh, which is why I'm going extra careful here. Uh, don't do anything stupid or anything more stupid with the car, because it is... I tell you what, this section is so difficult with these cars. There is no grip. It slips and it slides. And we are very sideways through the final corner. But there we go. We are across the line. We are finished. Now... Joe has still got to make it. I'm going to guess Impega may well... He's either got the car going or has reset and got going. Uh, Joe has still got to make it at the end of the day. And with the covert, that is easier said than done. If Joe makes a big mistake, Shadow could have a chance. Joe is very sideways. I would not be that sideways heading towards the uh, on-rushing car. Uh, <laughs> Impega with a sneak... I don't think it was like... A, it wasn't really a full attempt at a murder. It was enough to, to sort of spook Joe in that one. So... <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, carefully does it. Carefully does it. Uh, you can see the oversteer the oversteer going on in that car. It's in the gutter on the run down there. Now, Shadow has got the K-Series. We know that K-Series is pretty rapid. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to make up, well, that much of a gap. We can just about see the nameplate. There you go. You can just see the car uh, heading around. Joe has got to now navigate the containers. Uh, oh, God, very close to the wall that killed in Pega's car. And just going for a bit of showboating, I guess. Or had some sort of weird technical difficulty. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's such a big lead. And this is the, the say, this, this is what, what can happen. It is the slight down. It's a slight downside. It is the challenge of this uh, of this type of racing. If you push the car too hard and make a mistake here, it's punishing. And 
while I made a couple of little errors in putting the car in the sort of guttery bit, uh, it thankfully was not enough to severely break it. I think we were going to be, I think we were going to be struggling to catch that Pazima. However, Joe is is very much going for the show off. If you break it now and somehow fail to finish, I'll be very disappointed. But they do not. Joe is across the line. Orange team is into the final. Uh, through consistency, I think, more than outright pace. Uh, these, I think the, this pairing, I think, was actually probably the fastest two cars here. Um, however, uh, a crash on a rock face was enough to do it. I mean, we saw in Pegasus actually a little, a little wonky coming into the container section. I did start making up some ground. And, yeah, that was it. That would do the job. Shadow and Impega, they are eliminated. Well, somehow, me and Joe have made it into the final. We are on to the second of the semi-finals. We have the Legron versus a Wendover. I say a Wendover, it's half a Wendover at best, really. I uh, don't know what we're going to see from this. I think the green team are probably the one to beat here. Uh, the Legron, I think the Legron and Minivan are both heavier than anything else any other team has got. However, the Legron has maybe got a slightly better start here than the Wendover. This could make life difficult for Green Team. Uh, as we head into the Twisties, although the Legron doesn't turn very well, but it's difficult to pass here. It, even if you've got a quicker car, this is a very difficult route to pass on. Uh, Blazer is all over the place at the moment with the Wendover, uh, looking for any opportunity. Ollie has, is actually extending the lead at the moment. The Legron is pulling away for the moment, but we saw what happened with Impega. All it takes is one little mistake. It's the smallest brush on the rocks, the smallest clip of a wall, and you can have a heavily damaged car. Uh, oh, Blazer's gone in very quick through there. I applaud the effort. I applaud the effort. Blazer is full commitment up this course. Uh, it, is, it is a hell of an effort going on from that Wendover. But it's look, it's giving me anxiety, and I'm not on that team. It doesn't make no difference to me if that hits the wall, but it's playing it really close. The Legron is through. The Wendover is millimeters from the wall, and now we are on the ice. This, I mean, you can make it, you can definitely break it uh, going around here if you get it wrong. The Wendover does seem quite good on the ice as the Legron. It, I, it probably looks a little faster maybe in these third-person cameras. I certainly do not have this sort of speed, I don't think, up here with the 800. Or I don't feel like I do with the 800 series. Uh, Blazer is very sideways uh, through here, but it's going to be the Legron that... Oh, maybe it's going to be the Legron that leads the way. Legron is very understeery through there. It's not going to be by much. Blazer's had a very good section on the ice here. As the... Oh, the... Oh, there has oh, there's been a little bit of lag, but they're across. So, pink team leads the way. Minivan versus touring car, essentially. Uh, this could... Well, the touring car has got to find a way past at the end of the day. Um, it is not necessarily going to be the easiest of things to overtake the, the minivan. As I said, it's so wide, although a big understeer moment for it is going to give Speed Beast a great opportunity to get past, uh, which they do, although they then slide through the next corner. They're both running a little bit wide. It's side by side on the ice uh, through this next turn. Amy, you're not going to you're not going to want to be stuck on the outside through there. Uh, now, the minivan has got the most power here. It's about 400 horsepower on that one, which, yep, that's quite a lot to be to be working with. Uh, however, of course, it's very heavy. There's a lot of minivan to get through. The corner, they both hit the wall. Has anyone got significant damage? That is the question here. They look like they've both got away without anything major. Uh, Amy is really going for it in that minivan. That is full bravery towards the containers. I think it bumped the wall again through there, but it's right on the bumper of Speed Beast. Will they find a way past into this next corner? Uh, Speed Beast struggling to stop it. The minivan struggling to stop as well, and it's crashed. It was off the wall and around it went, and that's a spin, and I think it might be beached. It is. <laughs> it is beached. <laughs> the most... I think that may have been a tiny bit of known crapper on that one. But uh, I respect the effort. That was a hell of a job. The minivan put up one hell of a fight. It was a great round, actually. But yeah, just a little bit too fast. 
plinks it off an Armco barrier. Speed Beast will take victory. Got They got a little bit lucky. It clogged the wall. It hit the wall quite hard um, in that downhill braking zone. I think it may have well have bent the front wheel. Uh, however, they both hit it. They both did damage to the car down that section. And try as Amy might, the minivan. Yeah, little, little error would end up spun and stuck. So we have our finalists. I'm definitely scared. Here it is, the final. The 800 series is versing the Wendover on the run up the hill. It'll be the Mr. Turbo Covet on the way down against that Cherrier. I am... I'm worried. I, I am worried, yes. We have, of course, got the Mr. Turbo. I am worried about my vehicle's performance a little bit. I don't know why the handbrake doesn't seem to want to work in this car, but it doesn't seem to be great. We are going to beat the Wendover off the lights. The Wendover is not great to start with. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, we have got off the line better that time around. My handbrake just didn't want to hold the car for some reason. But we've, we've, we've made, we've done the difficult bit. We've got off the line in the lead. The Wendover is going to have a look. But it's, as I said, it's so difficult to pass on this bit of the circuit. Uh, I've just got to not make any mistakes. I am worried about the ice. I think that Wendover is better than I am through there. Uh, however, we can try and build the lead as much as we can. We have actually got a nice little lead at the moment. Don't do anything stupid going through the wall. Uh, uh, I'm just, I am being a little cautious because the last thing I want to do is have the, the Wendover has no traction back there. The Wendover oh, is very slight. See, I just don't trust my car if I start moving about. And I also have massive turbo lag, it seems. Maybe... So I got the straight six in this with a turbo. Maybe that wasn't the way to go, because I really... First gear's not long enough, and second gear I just have a whole load of turbo lag. And turbo lag's bad when I'm on the ice, because you suddenly get power. Oh, no. Make that corner. The front end just did not want to turn, and I'm a little bit stuck in the gutter. Well, I can make that corner better with the wheels in the ditch, but it has bent them. And now I will struggle to make this next corner. It just doesn't turn. The, the Wendover is going for the sideways strategy. I might have to employ it a little bit more. But my steering is bent and buckled. And Blaze has overdone it. Uh, yeah, putting my wheels in the ditch has caused us problems. It doesn't handle very well. However, we will be across the line. Go, Joe. It falls to you. <laughs> It falls to you. Uh, Speed Beast is released. So yeah, I I just didn't trust my car on the ice anywhere near as much as Blazer was. And with that bent wheel... Oh, Joe, no, 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 no! Get that car out of the ditch. Speed Beast is going to have to slam on the brakes, take avoiding action in that. But will potentially get past. Although that Covert has got some acceleration and Joe's found a little bit of tarmac and got away there. Uh, oh, through the next corner we go. It's a slide and a bump in the wall. That's not ideal, though. At least it was fairly square on the side of the car rather than nose first. So Joe might have got away without too much damage. Gonna have to be careful on the run down the hill here. Uh, this next corner we've seen a lot of cars into the fence through the left-hander, and Joe has avoided it. Speed Beast has hit it very hard. That's going to have done some damage to the Chariot. Oh, I think it's taken out the steering. I think the Chariot has lost steering, and it is done. Oh, <laughs> oh Joe, all you got to do is finish. All you got to do is finish. Um, I'm, as I say, I'm surprised... Maybe he's drove in that hard, that corner. I mean, the they hit that corner last time around. It's actually what damaged the Chariot against the minivan too. Uh, when you're so close, when you're so so much in the fight, uh, the last thing you want to do is, well, throw it away. I, I will I will say, I will appreciate, I, I drove my, my run quite conservatively with the 800 series. But it meant that we got to the top uh, outside of putting it in a ditch. A little bit. We got to the top in one piece. We handed over to Joe with the lead. And it is going to be a victory for the Orange team here. With a celebratory spin. And a flick around for the Mr. Turbo. Comet and off it goes. The Orange team is victorious.
in the relay race. It was good consistency. <laughs> Slow and steady did kind of win the race in this one. I actually genuinely think my 800 series was one of the weaker cars on here. It's definitely very difficult to drive. Um, but I didn't crash it. <laughs> and that's that's what made the difference. And Joe did a good job. Despite a little spin at the start, Joe did a great job at keeping the Mr. Turbo Covert under control for the run down here. Joe didn't find that Armco barrier like everyone else did multiple times. And yeah, consistency did the trick. So there we go. We will be victorious. The first beam relay race. And we have taken a victory. Well, there we go as somewhere the chariot is going to head around the final corner and into a tree. Uh, <laughs> that will be it for this, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.